Oh yeah, welcome back to the Easy Comic Reader Variety Show. My name is Mike, and I want to welcome you back, or if you're here for the very first time, I want to say, hey, thank you. (laughs) Alright, so today, this week, uh, is definitely not going to be as long as last week's show. If you watched all of last week's, thank you. It was was a lot of fun uh, sharing all those cool books with you all. But this week, this week we're going to take a look at, where focus is going to be on the spider. If you've never heard of the spider or whatever, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. I am definitely not an expert on the spider, but you're going to, you're going to learn a little bit. You're going to learn as long, you're going to learn as I learn. How about that? So, uh, in, yeah, so stick around. We're going to have a few little surprises as always. And this week, sing along. You may not know the words, but you're definitely going to have fun with this one. So, we're going to be right back after a few words from our fabulous fine sponsors. We couldn't have made it through the day hey, without something to show the way, without something to keep us going. And you can't make it through the night if you don't have some kind of light that shall Seven up. Seven up. We see the light of seven up, seven up, seven up. We see the light of seven up, seven up. Hurry, Batman! The Joker's loose! Wait, Robin, the Batmobile needs waxing. I'll use this easy no-buffing wax. Old chum, rally car wax is just as easy, but does more. More? Observe. Rally is made to clean, to remove dirty road film. Your wax isn't. Great grime. I would have waxed right over dirt. Precisely. Dupont Rally waxes the car, not the dirt. It's energized Spider-Man, battery not included. Attach the spider clamp, flip the switch, and the motorized web climber starts him climbing, keeps him climbing. Energized Spider-Man, the spider web trap for lifting and pulling. 
The Spider Light. You can watch him climb in the dark and pretend he's searching for the enemy. The Power Pack turns on the Spider Copter, sold separately. Spider-Man flies by night. Energized Spider-Man comes with motorized web climber. Spider Copter sold separately by Remco. Crystal! The saga of Crystal! A fantasy world of crystal warriors, demons, and wizards. Good wizards like OGLD, evil wizards like Zardek, and underworld demons like Moltar. They've captured OGLD! Each figure with a crystal prism that makes everything look like this. Witness and might, evil and might, the winner is up to you! The Saga of Crystal Collection. Each figure sold separately by Remco. Hey man, that's how sure. Oh yeah, welcome back, welcome back. Yeah, guys. Let me tell you a little bit about the spider. Okay. And while I do this, we're gonna be jamming out once again to the Catman Jack podcast. Put out by Gray Man and his dad. Uh, thank you, Gray Man, for the uh, the song dedication for this week's uh, new show. Uh, very cool, man. Very cool. And I do appreciate that. But, all right. So let me tell you a little bit about the spider. It says, Master of Men, the spider. Okay. I'm going to weave in and out between this book and its actual origins that goes back to the pulp era of storytelling, right? Pulp era stories. So the spider uh, I can't, I'm not going to give you the, well, I'll just say this. This character first came out back in the early 30s, right, as a pulp magazine character. In the pulps, this was a very violent hero, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, the little research that I did on it talked about how, I mean, there was just constant killing but that's how this character the spider served justice okay so that is the pope and in the pope they never from like i said i i went and read a few excerpts from from a couple of the stories wow was i blown away now i know why uh, charlton 66 loves his pope story so much i've read a few things here and there but this one in particular this pope story it was just the author was just so cool. And I will show you a little bit of that in the next segment. All right. But we're here to take a look at Timothy Truman's interpretation of the spider. And this one is Blood Dance, book one. So anyway, I like the way this starts off. It says uh, the 90s, according to the 1930s, because, yeah, this one was put out in 91. Right. And if you've never heard of Truman or you're not too familiar with Timothy Truman, my first uh, introduction to Truman was in his uh, series called The Scout, which is another awesome, awesome freaking uh, um, Truman showing his, his greatness in that, in that one. Also, maybe you may be familiar with Timothy Truman with his work on. Uh, the Hawkman story, Hawk World, which I read that several months ago. Shout out to Higgy Pop. <laughs> there's, there's your eye for Brother Aaron. But anyway, so let's talk a little bit about this one, okay? Uh, this this iteration of the character of the spider, and by the way, all this is, is fairly new to me. And I just want to say that I am glad that I picked this up, okay? Because it is a cool story, but it's exactly what I am going for with my collecting these days. My focus on collecting is always going to be the horror comics, the war, the war comics, uh, some funny books uh, sprinkled in, some good sci-fi, but... What I really want to delve into is what I what I consider, okay? I'll <laughs> start arguments, but what I consider the history of comics, and that is the pulp magazines, all right? And like I said, 
I am going to make a little separate separate section or segment for this character of what I found over on the uh, internet database, internet archive, I should say. But yeah, Truman, uh, like I said, I'm learning and I dig it. I'm learning about the pulps. I'm learning about pretty much the history, like, and like I said, in my opinion. But anyway, in this iteration of the spider, Truman has a lot of similarities to Batman. Okay. And I'll say this. If if you want if you ever thought of Batman just unleashing like Batman no holds barred Batman not just wounding his enemy but literally taking care of business if you know what I mean you will love Truman's uh spider and from my understanding in the pulp magazines this character, the spider, when handled by a certain writer, held pull back no punches, baby. I mean, it, they said it. And from what I read, I mean, just in a matter of minutes, there were people being taken out left and right. Yeah, but we're looking at issue number one. But anyway, getting back to Truman. I think Truman tried... To give this character motivation pretty much the same storyline as Batman in this and in, in Truman's uh, version of a spider he has this character's parents also murdered right just like Batman but keep in mind this character came out I believe in 32 33 somewhere around there but always starts off the same just like that but uh, yeah, so this character's parents were murdered on Halloween, <laughs> and that is this uh, version of the spider. That is his motivation, right? For justice to be served. Now, it's not as simple as that, right? You have a few subplots going on in here, but for the most part, uh, there is a huge similarity to the Batman. But keep in mind, this character came out before the Batman in pulp magazines. So, if you can see, man, it's, it's some good storytelling. Pretty straightforward, right? With that twist of, like I said, this hero doesn't care. If he's going to serve justice, justice will be served no matter what. It's got a cool little cast of characters. Just like Batman, he has his uh, his people that he trusts, that uh, that know, you know, who he is. And just like in Batman, in this storyline, this character struggles with who is the real person. Is it Wentworth, which is uh, Richard Wentworth, by the way, if I didn't if I didn't mention it. The character's name is Richard Wentworth, and he is a he's a millionaire, just like Batman. His parents were murdered, just like Batman, and um, he struggles with that identity. And I believe that struggle and the whole death of the parent was probably more than likely added in by Truman, because in the pulp magazines, that is never established because... You know, back then, the main uh, focus for those magazines was to put action and and just carry on. Yeah, great stuff in here. Sorry about the glare, y'all. But as we get closer to Halloween, not that not the same that this has a horror vibe to it, but as we get closer to Halloween, this is a cool one to get jump started into, right? So. I probably will not open up too much the third issue because there's only three issues to this. There's only th it's a three-part story, but there are, like I said, those similarities between this character and Batman, being that Truman went that direction with the character motivation. Like I said in the in the uh, 
and the pulp magazine from the few excerpts that I read. I mean, it's just craziness, craziness. And as more stories were written, the, cra <laughs> the crazier they got. And uh, I can't show that page. Not that it's bad or anything, but if I show you that, you'll know who the villain is right away. The ultimate villain, right? So anyway, jumping back to number one. Number one features in the back, if you are interested. Number one has a nice little historical um, write-up about the history of the spider cereals. Which, because of reading this, I went back and I watched a few episodes. And it follows the, the cereal, uh, follows the same uh, pattern, if you will, of a lot of the cereals back then. They had the cliffhangers. You had your car chases. You had your falling off of something. <laughs> right? But in issue number two, this talks about, this write-up right here is mostly about, well, exclusively about, the um, the history of the pulp, and that's where I that's what drove me to go find out more information, and that's what drove me to the uh, Internet Archive and actually pull up the the pulps from that era and to look them up. So here's number three, issue number three, the finale of this story in particular, and like I said, I am reluctant to show too much because you'll see who the hero is because I would like I would I, it would be cool if you read this right uh, for me personally I can you can tell me what a book is about you can tell me the ending but I do like uh, if I really want to read it I'll go seek it out and I'll read it for myself because all I'm doing is just scratching the surface right but maybe through those few little shots you probably figure out who the villain is but very cool stuff, man. Very cool, cool stuff. So anyway, at the end of this one, let's see if I can find you another cool villain shot here. Not really villain, but some of the action going on. Very bloody. Very. <laughs> it is a very, not that it's depicted that way in this book. It's not at all. It's not overly uh, uh, saturated with gore. But it has it has some cool action, and then you know the spider takes care of business, right? So it's not on the edge of you just can't you can't stomach it, or it's just overly done. Truman does a really good job of showing the action. But anyway, in the back of issue number three has a cool write up about Truman himself and why he decided to write or to create his version of this pulp character that that he fell in love with like all of us do just that chance meeting of picking up a book and and falling in love with this character so anyway let me uh let me follow this segment up with a quick look at the internet archive and a few things that i found but yeah this week's feature is Master of Men, The Spider, by Timothy Truman. It came out in 1991, and it was put out by Eclipse Comics. So if you know anything about the indie from the 80s, like Brother PSG calls it, the way he says it, Eclipse, a lot of times you are not going to go wrong. So shout out to Rob one more time, Triple C, for, for having this available on his claim sale. And thank you, man. I mean, well worth the money, brother. Well worth the money. And again, this is exactly what I need to dig deeper into the pulp heroes that we find that later on become comic books. And those heroes spawn any and every other comic hero you can think of. And that is where I want to focus my study of this hobby, of this thing we call collecting funny books. And that's where I want to take it. So check it out, y'all. If you're interested in it, go find it. Um, ask Rob Triple C, did you find any more, brother? And if you didn't, keep on a lookout because I want more, more, more. <laughs> Let Rob know that keep on a lookout for this 
and maybe he will have it in a future claim sale. All right, so let's take a look at what I found on the internet database or internet archive. All right, here we go. We're looking at, uh, I'm just gonna flip back a few pages. We're over here on the internet archive, okay? We, we looked up the spider, and this is a more than likely a reprint. But if you take a look at it, man, uh, if you've never read any of these uh pulps, uh, they're cool stuff, they, they are text heavy, I'll just tell you that right now. But man, once you do it, get into the story, okay? This one came out, let's see, let me go back if I can find it real quick. Well, I guess I'll just do this right here. Check it out right here. Click on the first one. Let's see, you can see what I did here. 1941, but the, the character himself goes further back than that. But take a quick look. I mean, just the story. Satan's Seven Swordsmen. <laughs> Boy. Uh, <laughs> There you go, Stan Lee. Eat your heart out. As a matter of fact, uh, in one of the uh, uh, back of the uh, back of issue number two, I believe he said that Stan quoted was quoted as saying that Stan Lee, that is, was quoted as saying his one of his inspirations for Spider-Man was this story. But uh, the author goes on to explain how in the world can that be? This guy was super violent. <laughs> Spider-Man never was. But anyway, um, these are just some examples of what I read what I got into, uh, what makes me want to, as you can see, it's very pulp, uh, very text heavy, but once you get in, uh, like for example, in the pulps, this guy, the, the spider is made to look very uh, menacing, right? Strike fear in the hearts of men, just like Batman tried to do with the uh, bat suit. Well, this guy definitely does it. But uh, if you go through some of these, and you, you know, take a little time. It's going to take some time to read all through it. And I did not get through all of these. I just kind of got the feel for the story. Uh, here's one. There's another one that I read or parts of it. You get the feel for the story. Let me borrow this one. Great resource, by the way. Internet Archive, man. You can find so many cool things on here. Wait for my internet to catch up. But we're going to borrow this. Uh, this one in particular, uh, if it ever loads. <laughs> Shout out to the slow internet out there. Here we go. Okay. The spider. And I really don't know why I've never heard of this one before. Why I've never heard of this character as much. And it took, like I said, it, it took me to say, you know what, Rob? Let me check out that book. You know, you're telling me this, that, and the other. And I picked up all three. Man, I'm so glad I did. Uh, this one was, this is obviously a reprint from back then. Uh, they talk a little bit about the history of it. The man who ruled hell. <laughs> like I said, man, you cannot go wrong with these stories. This one in particular, uh, the characters, the gang, if you will, wear these uh, gauntlet gloves if you, and they hack and slash their victims. Um, and, of course, it's up to the spider to find out what the heck is going on. And he will find out what's going on. He's not going to let uh, these guys get away with it. But anyway, if you also look here on the uh, Internet Archive, I was able to find uh, the uh, 19 uh, the serials that came out. And if you scroll down, you know, there, there's a lot of comparison to, of course, Batman and Truman's, but also in the pulps, it was always looked at that this is another iteration of the Shadow, which is another character that I cannot wait to jump into. But like I said, I went ahead and started off with the Spider, and this is what I found in my very uh, minimal research for now. But I encourage you all again. Well, I'll just say this. If you find this interesting, man, go for it. If, but this is where I am taking my collecting as far as 
heroes in comics. So there you go, folks. There's just a quick rundown. Go over to Internet Archive, find what interests you, and you will be amazed about what you can find and what you can learn. All right. The war in Vietnam was real blood, real death, and no laughing matter. Neither of these days are some comic books. Now there's a new realistic series called The Nam. The giant in the industry, Marvel Comics, publishes everything from Care Bears to Spider-Man. Now they've added a new bestseller to the comic stands, The Nam. It's a series of stories that chronicle the war years between 1966 and 1974, reliving battles that were replayed on TV and North American living rooms. Today, as more and more Americans try to come to terms with the war, Vietnam veteran and series writer Doug Murray says it's a comic book series whose time has come. When I first got into the Army in 72, I wrote a couple of Vietnam stories for the other company. And when they finally got around to publishing them, they changed them to World War II stories because they didn't want to touch the Vietnam War. The Nam claims to be realistic and not like most war comics that wipe out the entire German army at the stroke of an artist's brush. The Nam comic is being released one book every month for the next eight years, the actual length of the war in Vietnam. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for this week's feature musical act, Question Mark and the Mysterians with 96 Tears. Oh, baby, get your tissues out. Here we go. <laughs> Too many teardrops for one heart to carry on. You're way on top now since you left me. You're always laughing way down at me. But watch out now. I'm gonna get there. We'll be together for just a little while, and then I'm gonna put you way down here, and you'll start crying. Ninety-six years, cry. When the sun comes up, I'll be on top. You be right down there, looking up. And I'm my way, come up here. But I don't see you waving now. I'm way down here, wondering how I'm gonna get to you. But I know now, I'll just try, try. I'll just cry. Too many teardrops for one heart to be crying. Too many teardrops for one heart to carry on. You're gonna cry 96 tears. You're gonna cry 96 tears. You're gonna cry. Cry, 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 man. You're gonna cry, 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 cry. 96 tears. Come on, let me hear you cry now. 96 tears. Woo! I wanna hear you cry. Night and day, yeah, all night long. 96 tears. Cry, cry, cry. All right, welcome back. Here we go. Let's take a look at five paperbacks from my paperback book collection. Okay, this time we're gonna look at some westerns, but. Uh, I'm going to need some help with these, y'all. I was only able to find one of the cover artist names. But nonetheless, if you know of any databases that I could go to and, and, and help help me figure out who does these covers, please let me know. But the one cover we're going to start off with, this one is called Cry Coyote. 
by Steve Frazzi, right? Now, that is the author, but, I mean, take a look at that beauty, okay? I wish, I wish, I wish I found out who did this work. I mean, it's beautifully painted, or at least I believe it's painted. It looks a lot like painted cover to me, but... Oh, there's the author. Man, I'm finding out right now. Who does this say? That says Tom Tom Ryan. Okay. Breaking news. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Tom Ryan. If that is correct, unless that was somebody named Tom Ryan that owned this book. <laughs> Tom Ryan did the cover on that. Boy, so now I'm going to go look up Mr. Tom Ryan. I'm going to write that down in my big chief tablet. Tom Ryan. Okay, so that's who did this one. I bet you if I found out, if I find Tom Ryan, I bet you I'm going to find a lot more. So anyway, that's the first one. This is, here is the back of the cover. Sexton hit him. <laughs> okay, so this come out in uh, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. Oh, not finding a lot, a lot of luck today. 19. 1969 was a printing that I have from this one. So, all right. So, here's another one. Again, now that I've got a lead, I don't know who did this one. I don't see any uh, names attached to the cover, but this one's Prairie Guns by Ernest Haycox. Okay. This was put out by, this says on the back, this is a genuine pocketbook. 1214. That was not what I paid for it. More than likely, I paid a dollar sometime back. All right. It says the frontier lives again. And this one, you want to find that one? Oh, that's, some... <laughs> that's pain on the eye. Man, I should have read that a few years ago when I didn't need the, the glasses as much. Okay. Okay. So we got a year of 19. This one says 1949, okay? 1949 is when this one came out. Of course, the story came out in the 30s, but you get the picture. Okay, and now we have another one that I do not know the artist for. And, oh, it looks signed at the bottom very faintly. But easy, do your research, man. But I know I just like to grab a, a five paperbacks at a time and just share them with you all. This one is... Montana rides again. It says the Montana kid answers a border outlaws challenge. <laughs> oh man, shout out to the great state of Montana. There you go. Call to danger. Ride south if you dare, Montana. Oh man, he coming down to sunny South Texas. Going to take care of all, <laughs> take care of all the business that's plaguing us these days. Okay, so let's see. Uh, get it. Oh, I remember this one now. I, I featured this on one of my very first videos. Okay, I'm looking for a date on this one, real quick. The latest that I have is 1957. The original story came out in 1947. So, there you go. Montana Kid rides again, shooting them up. Okay, this next one, All right? Dead Man Pass by Peter Dawson. What does that say right there? A hard-riding loner with a price on his head and only his gun to clear his name. Boy, say less, say less. I'm hooked. <laughs> Saddle tramp. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I did show these. But if you watched that video a while back when I first started making videos, I do appreciate it. 1967. Okay. Dead Man Pass. Okay, that was number four. And our last one for today, it says, Red, Red Runs the River. Oh, man. What makes the river red? I wonder, I wonder. He followed the vengeance trail in a, into a Cheyenne trap. Well, that one looks familiar, too. Did I show this one? Man, are all these repeats? I am sorry if that's the case. But I don't know if very many of you watch those first videos. <laughs> and I wouldn't watch them if I were you. They're pretty rough. Not that these are any better. Okay, let's see. This one, 1970. Okay. 
whatever. Check them out. Again, beauty, beautiful painted covers. I need to do my due diligence a little bit better. So again, if anybody has a some sort of database or website that you know that can give me a better lead on who did some of these, just like I found out, old beautiful Tom Ryan. If that is his name, Tom Ryan. Boy, y'all let me know. But anyway, there are your five paperbacks for this week. And like I said, I'm going to try to change uh, the genre a little bit here and there. But predominantly, my paperback collection are westerns, sci-fi, and just a little bit of everything else in between. So thank y'all. On to the next. He's a tough man. To let him live is taking a chance. Since he knows our secret, he has to be killed. Terry Sigori, six foot six of half-breed fury. But he's got a little problem. He has a hard time making friends. You tell that bitch who sent you here. How sorry I am, I can no longer be her friend. <laughs> The Street Fighter. If you've got to fight, fight dirty. I'll kill Suzuki. Now I owe it to him. I'll show you all the meanest guy in the world. You'd better give up. I'm a master and you're going to lose this game. Yeah! Yeah! Time to settle the score. Don't be too impatient. I'll see you another time. I hate punks worse than anything. And I would love to see the mob destroyed. He has to die. We cannot let him live. Remember. I owe nothing to any school. You beat a man, they call you tough. You beat an army, they call you the Street Fighter. Introducing the incredible Sonny Chiba. You don't know what mean is until you meet. On a deserted beach, at sunset, an army of karate killers is preparing for war. Their enemy is the greatest living master of the martial arts, Sun Shiva. In The Street Fighter, he proved himself to be the undisputed king of karate. Now, Sonny Chiba creates the most devastating display of death and destruction ever captured on film. Sonny Chiba is the champion of death. Fearlessly facing flying lead and flashing steel. Battling a raging bull with his bare hands. Sonny Chiba, alone against an endless onslaught of enemies. In the ultimate in martial arts mayhem, champion of death, rated R. All right, folks, there you go. Hope you <laughs> well, it's Sonny Chiba, man. What can you say? I, I dig that dude. Um, anyway, that is the end of this week's show. Before you go, please stick around. Uh, this week, uh, for our ending number. You may have heard it if you, uh, you know, he grew up in the 80s, or if you were around in the 80s, I'll just say that. Uh, if you've never heard this song, just give it a give it a few hums, boy, you will definitely, definitely reckon you will definitely jump into it. I'll just say that, but uh, yeah, anyway, that is it for me for this week. I want to say thank you. Uh, do apologize for not putting out a uh, funny pages for this week, but. I was a little bit under the weather uh, during this week, but I feel a lot better today, feeling stronger every day. And um, just want to say, uh, be on the lookout for next week for ECR Funny Pages. But um, you all have a great week. Thank you for spending some time with me. Thank you for watching. 
And, uh, and as always, man, thank you all for the comments down below. I do appreciate those, and I do respond to each and every one of you. Um, but anyway, y'all stick around for this final number, and God bless all of y'all, and thank you. And we'll see you next time on the Easy Comic Reader Variety Show. For its next month, it's going to be jam-packed full of all the scary and creepy and grueling and all, 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 all that good stuff. So looking forward to that. Hope you are too. Y'all take care. Oh, a boogie woogie box. Music. When me and my friends go out in the town, we can't sit still, we can't sit down. We don't like to fight and we don't like to scuffle, but we dance all night doing the curly shuffle. Hey, Mo, hey, Mo. Hey, Mo, hey, Mo. Well, uh, yuck, 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 well, me and my friend love Larry and Bo. We love Curly's brother Shemp and his fat clone Joe. It's such a delight to boogie and hustle, dancing all night doing the Curly Shuffle. Hey Mo, hey Mo, hey Mo, hey Mo. Well, I yuck, yuck, Well, we never miss a chance. We get up and dance and do the Curly Shuffle. It's on late night TV. Those knuckleheads up to get in a scuffle. They push and they shove doing the curly shuffle. Hey, Mo, hey, Mo. Hey, Mo, hey, Mo. Well, I know. Look at the grouse. Look at the grouse. Look at the grouse. Look at the grouse. <laughs> well, we never miss a chance. We get up and dance and do the curly shuffle. Right. We do the curly shuffle. What you say? We do the curly shuffle. That's what I thought you said. We do the curly shuffle. We do the curly shuffle. Sweet. We never miss a chance. We get up and dance and do the.